this, this is uh, an exciting uh, evening because we have four really distinguished panelists who are all doing some great things uh, coming out of Rady. Um, so we have Pingu, we have Wen Yan, we have Yang Yin, and we have Jeff Wen. Uh, I'm not even going to try to do it justice by introducing them, so I'm going to just turn it over to them one by one, and uh, we'll do it. Let's let's just start with Jeff. Jeff, can you um, kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, is my mic working okay still? Yes, it's working great. Okay, cool. So hi, everyone. My name is Jeff. Um, I currently work with Veritas Investments as a senior financial analyst. Uh, just a little bit about my company. We're a real estate company located here in SF. Um, we have like a couple billion in asset under management, but mostly I don't work with investments directly. Uh, as a senior analyst, I pretty much work a lot with corporate positions on the working with executive leadership teams and things like that, making overall company decisions or supporting decisions. So I'm a graduate from the 2020 cohort. I think, or 2020, 2020, um, <laughs> but yeah. Are you nice sure, Jeff? You yes, I think. Okay, just, just Correct checking. me if I'm wrong, we're all the same year, uh, all the time at <laughs> the same year, but um, yeah, I mean, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm open to questions, so please ask them during the, during the panel or afterwards. I'm always free to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Great, uh, Pingu. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Ping. I graduated in December 2020. So I, I think I'm pretty sure I'm a 2020 cohort. <laughs> so, sorry. It's my earbuds. So, currently I work as a business intelligence engineer at Pattern, which is an e commerce company, which is also a startup. Uh, Pattern is based uh, a little bit uh, about my company. It's like Pattern is based in Salt Lake City, like Utah, and most of focus on like uh, helping different brands to sell on uh, like different marketplaces, like uh, Amazon, Walmart, uh, and other like international marketplaces. So what I did uh, like everyday job is like analyzing like uh, sales inventory and different kinds of like e-commerce data and try to build up some visualizations to support different teams or across the company to make, make business decisions. So. Great. Great, thanks. Thanks, Ping. Mm -hmm. uh, Yiyang? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Yiyang. I graduated from the MSN program in December 2020, like everyone else. And I'm currently working for a consulting firm called Equity Methods. Uh, my firm specializes in equity compensation, so like stock options, restricted stock units, stuff like that. We are we work very closely with um, five S&P 500 companies, um, and we're based in Phoenix, Arizona, the Grand State Canyon State, Grand <laughs> Canyon State. Yeah, that's pretty much about me. Great, Young, and I, um, I know that uh, Equity Methods is going to be holding an information session um, at the beginning of October, right? Yes, so we're we'll... holding a sorry, uh, info session on October 6th. So if you are interested in knowing more about us or just a consulting career in general, you are welcome to check that out. Thanks, Young. Yeah. And Wen Young? Wen, so I should say Wen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can call me either Wen or Katie. So uh, I'm working as account manager at Baidu USA currently. I, I think most of you guys know Baidu, like the Google in China, largest search engine in China, a lot of other tech products. Uh, we were like the uh, overseas arm of Baidu in charge of all of the commercial related business in North America. Uh, our team also have a lot of overseas products like um, keyboard and uh, other uh, house related apps and adv advertising platforms. So the project I mainly work on is an advertising platform and um, I'm responsible for all the client response and uh, the product improvement. But we're also a very tight knit team where everyone needs to wear double hats. So uh, I also read a lot of like company research, product research stuff uh, kind of related to our core courses. Uh, so I think that's it. That's it. And um, yeah. 
Wow, that's a lot. So I'll tell you what, why don't we stick with you, Katie, and, and ask you, what does your day-to-day -day, um, look like? Yeah, yeah. Um, so to be as simple as possible, you can think account manager or um, cust customer success manager as a to be salesperson. We, uh, we have to serve our business clients um, to help them grow their business with our product and to help them achieve success. That's our main job. So a typical day of my life is um, before noon, I will check I will check each account I'm managing um, to check their like daily performance, uh, if there's anything wrong with their revenue, something like that. And afternoon, I will usually have two to three Zoom meetings with clients, uh, which are set on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis. Uh, after the meeting, I will still continue answering their questions and uh, try to solve their problems. And, and there are also a lot of uh, things going on on our department. So sometimes I would do some uh, research about our competitive companies or other companies we may be interested in investing, something like that. So it is um, kind of similar, but it's different. <laughs> similar, yeah. but different. I like that. Okay. Um, let's just keep moving down. How about Yang? What's your day-to-day -day um, look like? So my title is Financial Reporting Associate. That means I deal with financial reporting. And when it's like quarter end or monthly end, we usually need to deliver reports, like expense reports or EPS reports um, about like equity compensation for the clients. So my day-to-day -day usually starts with running code. We use SAS pretty heavily. So uh, I start my day running code, so they keep the code running, and I would do, like, check my emails or review the reports, make sure they're correct and perfect before we deliver to the clients. Um, but when it's not really, like, quarter end or monthly end, I would usually spend time um, just automate my code, automate my process. We have a lot of macros in our code. So I would also spend time learning about the macro so I can make my work more efficient. Yeah, that's pretty much a very big chunk of my day. Sounds like a pretty busy day. Yeah, it's very fast paced. How, how many hours, how, how on average, how many hours of uh, a day do you work? Um, when it's reporting season, usually around 45 to 50 for me right now, because um, I'm fairly new and I don't do a lot of heavy lifting. But as you <laughs> progress to like a more senior role, you might need to take more responsibility. Yeah, okay, great. And Ping? Ping you're oh, you're on mute, Ping. You're on mute. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so my title is a business intelligence engineer. So you can tell like um, most part of my job is about data analysis and data visualization. So the tool I use often is like SQL and Tableau. So starting from the day in the morning, I will usually check, like, check my email or Slack to say if I got some like messages for my end users. The end users being some like different teams in the company. So like all of them are the end users of my report, Tableau report. So I would just check if I got any messages from them. Now, if I do, I would just fix some, um, some like errors, just like tweak, uh, just make some like tweaks in the like Tableau report to make it work for the end users. Uh, that's the first, first thing I will do like in the morning. Then for the rest of the day, that's pretty straightforward. I just work for <laughs> work on my task, or, which is assigned to me. So our team is like, um, if it, it's like, oh, we have like less collaborative work. Like most of the work is assigned to like somebody, like oh, just one person. So you just focus on your task and get it done. But like during the process, mostly you need to talk to the end user to say, oh, what's your requirements? To make sure you understand the requirements and to get the correct data, you also need to uh, talk to the development team to make sure that you will have that data and uh, we have that, um, we can analyze that data in a correct way. And then just like, 
Yeah, but during the process, you will talk to the different teams, but like the but you have like the whole responsibility like for just like your task. So, but but anyway, like you can like still ask many questions if you uh if you have like. Uh, like ask for some help from your like teammates and uh, the managers. So that's basically what I like the daily daily life so what, for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ping, so what I'm hearing from you is, I mean, you have a lot of tasks, but there's also a lot of communication skills that you need. You're always yeah. constantly communicating, I guess, with clients, external clients or external uh, users. Uh, I would say it's groups. internal. Yeah, okay. it's most. Yeah, most of the end users are like internal, um, internal like I would say colleagues. Yeah, so, so they they're just like from different team. Right, yeah. but you don't get to hide in the in a in a room and not talk to anybody. You actually have to communicate. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. must. Yeah, that's a must to do thing. Yeah, like for my yeah. job. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So I think obviously, you know, but one thing we kind of underestimate sometimes, and I'll get to you in a second, Jeff, is that whole communication side of it. You know, a lot of us are really great technically, um, but, you know, there's there's a gap in the communication skills that we need to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Great. Um, Jeff, how about you? What's your day-to-day -day yeah. look like? My my day-to-day -day is pretty boring. Um <laughs> I would say my day to day is it kind of sounds a lot like Yang's. Uh, so my role is a senior financial. Wait, analyst. are you saying that that Yang's job is boring too? I think that <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's if she could reach out, right? she would probably punch you right now. It's that subjective. I find a lot of things boring, but um, <laughs> but sticking to the topic, I would say like so. The senior part of my title is really something that was just thrown there, but um thing is I report directly to the director of finance and we both report directly to the CFO. So there's really not much of a hierarchy or a gap there, which means on day to day, what I'm tasked with doing is just when the executive leadership team needs any type of supporting information to make their corporate decisions or investment decisions, they reach out to my manager who then just, you know, reaches out to me and be like, hey, Jeff, this is what you need to do. And uh, I get it to them in a day. That's, that's basically what it is. But on a more broader scheme, like quarterly by quarter, like after the books close, I need to have like sets and sets of KPIs that I ship out to different departments to make sure that, you know, they're doing their job. You know, you're not hiring random people that I don't approve. Um, you're hitting all your investment goals. You know, I see money going up. Um, so that I can report to my manager who then reports to his manager and things like that. So on a big, on, on a big picture, it's just like, I just need to make sure everyone's doing their job and also do a lot of automated stuff like Yang does as well. I would say the reason why I claim to be more boring is because um, our company is a little bit small still. They like to know where numbers are coming from. So I'm prohibited from using code. Um, I have to do everything by hand and if they see a ratio, they're going to be like, Jeff, where that number come from? Um, I need to know the history of that number. So a single number could track to like 40,000 lines of GL that I have to figure that out. So it's, you see how that's boring because uh, it's, it's boring. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can control. Like uh, I'm helping build out like the whole reporting process in the company. Um, I'm also going to be involved in some hiring decisions. I'm hoping to be able to find some talent here at Radia as well. Um, so hopefully we can connect there, but yeah. My role is pretty big. There's a lot of spectrum there, but there's also a lot of boring stuff there. If you're interested, uh, reach out to me. I think we can speak more about that. Good. So it's probably, it's probably not as boring as Jeff's saying it is. It sounds pretty interesting and it's a flat structure, right? So you're, you're, you're having, exposure to high level people, which, you know, you don't necessarily get in, you know, big banks or other places. So I'm sure, um, you know, if you want to hire people, you probably shouldn't tell them it's boring. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. Picking up these skills as I go. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Um, we also appreciate honesty. So that's good. Um, all right. So let's go to the next question. How did you find your job? you know, after the MPIN program and what was the interview like? 
Let's go to Ian. Sure. So this job is not actually the first job I found. After graduation, I landed a real estate firm internship. And also I was a part-time research associate for Reedy for a couple of months. Um, and how I got that job was at that point in life, I was just applying for as many jobs as possible. And I didn't expect to get that real estate internship, but I got it, which kind of helped me build the, um, the experience. And also it was client facing. It kind of helped me land at this job as well. And well, if you have like OPT issue, that was like a good transition for you to focus on your full-time um, job. Um, the interview process for that real estate internship was very easy. Um, it was just a quick call with the managing director because it was a very small firm. And we kind of chatted about like what they do, what my experience is. It was fairly simple. But for this job, for Acme Methods, I went through two rounds of internship with, I met with eight people. Um, the two rounds of interviews, just internship <laughs> interviews. Um, and the interviews include like brain teaser, um, your experience, the culture of it, um, case study, but it was pretty intense. And you made it. I made it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> awesome. Uh, how about Ping? Yeah. Um, this job at Baidu is also not my first job at um, in the state. So my first job uh, was at Plug and Play, also like a consulting firm in Bay Area. And I was referred by uh, maybe a senior industry person to that role. Uh, so the interview process was also very easy um, cause he referred me to that job. So I only had a call with the VP of the department uh, and the call was super easy and I got an internship. Did the internship for about six months. Uh, and I think it's because of the, this internship, I uh, then uh, after graduation, I applied for a lot of other positions and um, many of them got, uh, give me interviews. Uh, that's how I find the opportunity at Baidu. I just search jobs on LinkedIn and Indeed and apply for the position and got the interview. The interview uh, was like three rounds plus an assignment. Uh, so first round was a phone call, typical phone call, behavioral questions, past experience, something like that. And the second um, interview was with our product manager uh, cause he was like from investment banking. So it was like an investment banking type of interview. And the final interview was with the hard, hard, head, was the head of the department. Um, so basically it's kind of uh, a normal tech for interview. Uh, and, and I feel like as long as you got the first internship in the US, it's not that difficult for you to find another job. Great, that's interesting. Um, thank you. Um, Ping? All right. Uh, so for my story, it's a long story, but an interesting one. So bear with me. I really want to share <laughs> this story with you guys. So probably like, uh, you can yeah, get some points from the story. So uh, this, this position, actually, it was, a, it was an internship. So when I applied for it, it's a business intelligence in, uh, intern. And, but anyway, I applied for it. And like two days later, I saw someone uh, looked at my like LinkedIn profile. So I clicked that, I found it was a CTO <laughs> that from this company, I was like, oh, that's great. Then I just showed him a message about like to express my interest in this company. Actually, I never heard about this company before. <laughs> but anyway, for job, right? <laughs> so I just <laughs> showed him a long message. That just like is expressing my like interest in this company and you know like emphasize like what kind of skill I have, um and he didn't reply. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's normal. <laughs> and I was like, mm, it probably didn't work. So I just like ignore it. Like apply for other jobs. Like, uh, but two weeks later, I got an email from the HR team 
uh, from Pattern, they're like, we would like to like schedule an interview with you. And that point, I just know it's like that message, I, the message I sent to the CTO helps me skip the first round of interview. They just scheduled me like the second round of the interview. And uh, I had the interview with them, like with my manager and the city also, like they're like two person like interviewed me. Uh, so the uh, way they asked some like uncommon behavioral questions, like for 45 minutes. That, yeah, as I can recall, it's like, it's not like normal questions like, oh, why, why do you want to work at our company? It's something like, um what what what's the things you won't do in the next five years so and it's something like what's the hardest decision you decision you have made in the past years uh, in, the, in the past years so yeah like luckily i have read some like articles about interviews so i know those kind of like stress question right like to say how you will behave under like a stressful situation so i just like answer them like normally it's like be honest i think that that's the first first advice like during the interview be honest and just to tell them like what do you really want to tell them but don't don't fake it don't fake it so then they will they they really will feel it like you feel honest a lot uh so that's the first takeaway also advice for our like infant students so uh, then we had a code testing. So they just sent me a like uh, word document with some like SQL, SQL questions. So I sh so I sh screen shared with them like they just like watching me typing the SQL code. That part was very well. They are surprised with my like SQL skills. I'm very glad about it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, that part really helps me stand out like uh, among the other candidates. So then move to the next part is about Tableau. So it's like my job is about SQL and Tableau. So they asked some like Tableau questions, but that's a part really got me. So they just like, or they just ask Tableau questions, like no examples. It was like, uh, I really didn't, uh, I like, I was like, I have heard about that concept, but I never tried. <laughs> so like, that's not, that's not good. So this here comes, uh, comes with the second advice. So be honest, but you know, very positive attitude, even though you don't know the answer, you, you can say, uh, I, I don't know the answer right now, but I have heard about something, right? Just tell, tell them, uh, something like you have heard about. And or you say, uh, I I have no idea right now, but I I will like explore it a little bit uh, more like later after the interview. Just be positive to show show like uh show your attitude, like show your interest, and show you 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 like you want to be a quick learner and you really want to try, right? So that's a second advice. So moving forward, uh, so we had uh, the interview last for like. Uh, 90 minutes. That's really stressful, I would say. <laughs> since, since I was there, it's just me like answering all the questions all the time. Uh, then after, I think, okay, here comes with the third advice. So after the interview, I know I didn't do well like in the Tableau part. So what I did was pulling some data, like using some data source from online and build a Tableau report using the concepts they like they mentioned during the interview. And I just send them send the Tableau report to the to them like the day, yeah, the day after, the day after the interview. So they got, yeah, they got my Tableau report and they really liked it. And two days later, they just had a, a, the final run of the interview with me, just asking some like normal behavioral questions about my resume and then I got a job. So that's a third advice. Even though you didn't do well, like during the interview, you and you know like which part, which part was the weakest part you have, it's like try try to do something to mend it, like to show you 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 really want to learn it or like you're you have a bias like for action and to show your attitude, like, and I, the feedback I got after I got the job, the feedback I got from the CTO was like, no, uh, 
the message, like the Pablo report I sent to him, the moment he got the message, he was like, I'm going to hire her since she's such an ambitious person and have a bias like, for action. That's, that's the person we really need for stuff. So that that's is a pretty my story. Inspiring. <laughs> that's a pretty inspiring story. So I think there's a lot of lessons. I, I, there's a lot of lessons in there, but the, the main lesson is just because you think you didn't do all that well, don't, don't give up. Mm-hmm. There's yep. always an opportunity to follow up. So the communication yep. that you have after the interview mm-hmm. is key. And as you said, sometimes you just don't have the answer right there. But mm-hmm. if, if you go back and you say, look, I, I think I made, I made a mistake here. I didn't understand. But here's what here's here's what I you know I did some reading I did some research mm-hmm. and this is what mm-hmm. I found out and so I hope that you know I hope you can you you can appreciate that so that's a really great story ping um, and I think it, mm-hmm. there's, there's so many great messages there's, there's more than three lessons in there I have to write it down I have to go back and look at the video <laughs> but it was great all right Jeff this is not going to be boring trust <laughs> um all right well. I'm going to give you a reason why. Well, I'm going to give you the opposite of that story. Um, Jason was saying, like, just because you didn't think you did well, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you that uh, just because you thought you did well, uh, don't stop looking because uh, you might not sit, have done as well as you thought. Um, that's basically a summary of my entire story. But here, here goes the long part. Um, I spent like six months looking for a job. I, I didn't have a very smooth role like everybody else. I think after December, which is when I finished my capstone project, I spent six months. So I got, I got my first job in July. And uh, I mean, the first two months I was doing CFA exam, which I, uh, reflecting on it, it didn't really help at all. So um, anyone considering the CFA, please make sure you know what it's doing for your career first. Um, but anyways, I applied on average like 200 applications a week, something like that. And then I went through a stupid amount of uh, interviews. Some of them are crazy. Like there was one interview where the guy met me and he was like, hey Jeff, nice to meet you. So uh, what's the central limit theorem? You know, they just hit you in the face with something that you think you should know, but you don't really know. But if you have a book, you will be able to tell them the right answer anytime. But you know, you don't, you really don't know the exact definition, right? So it's all those kind of things, or, or like they ask you what's Tableau and just like ping. I, I have no idea what Tableau is, right? I, I know what it kind of does. So the way I handle most of these is like, I get back to them within five minutes. You know, while they're talking, I do a quick Google search on the side, which you should never have to do, but if you need to do, you know, do what you need. Or like on a second interview, right? I did kind of like what ping did, except instead of a report, I just gave them like a two minute elevator pitch on why I love Tableau, right? Uh, I, I told him why I would use it for the rest of my life if my job depended on it. So things like that, you know, you got, you got to show them that you're willing to take an extra step, a step much like, you know, showing your face in a panel. I'm um, not saying you should, but like sometimes the panelists recognize you. Sometimes when you're interviewing, people notice you take one or two extra steps and that's really all it takes to land a job. But yeah, I went through a bunch of these very, very hectic things and in six months, I've landed about like four different offers. And I picked this one because the rest of them were so bad and boring. This is the least boring of the jobs I landed. So I had to, I had to take it. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I landed my job. Um, there was no recommendation. There was no anything. It was just like mindlessly uh, applying. One thing I would say, um, this is my last point. Um, if you can get LinkedIn, LinkedIn Prime Gold, what is the uh, the the premium function? Premium, in, uh, in, premium, premium. Yeah. Yes. Yep. LinkedIn Premium. Get that. Uh, I, I got it for free from a connection of mine. Um, it really helped. Uh, I reached out to a lot of people for fun. Just be like, hey, uh, I like your company. You know, I see myself doing this for you guys. Does that sound like something you're looking for? Or or you reach out to someone and of the same position or title and be like, hey, what do you do? Like, yeah, you, you, need, you need a member on the team. Are you guys hiring? Um, are there specific things you are looking to fill in certain roles? Things like that. Just reach out to people and talk. Uh, I won't say that it will get you a job, but it will definitely give you more stories to tell during an interview, which is always a good thing. So, yep. So I actually thought that was very positive and not boring. That was amazing. That was like some really great advice there, Jeff. But I think, you know, obviously, 
you worked you worked really hard you took yeah so it took you a little bit longer to find a job but you had four offers that's pretty impressive and you know so perseverance if anything don't give up right keep going um it's gonna it'll happen so um i appreciate that jeff that that's that was very very good so the next question is and i don't know if we need all of you to answer it's up to you guys but if the message is the same, then you can pass. But um, for international hires, um, what did you learn about OPT work authorization? Keep in mind, most of you guys are international, so this is going to be important. Um, what did you guys uh, learn about OPT work authorization, the H-1B sponsorship that would be helpful for our students to know? Who would be good? Who wants to take that? Anyone have any like specific experiences with this? Um. I probably want to add, yeah, add my point say about Please. the H1, yeah, H1B sponsorship is like, so, you know, you can choose the start date of the H1B sponsorship. Just be really careful with the start date. So if you, you kind of feel that you don't, you don't have any, like, I will say like, like this, if you decided to graduate like in December, and by December, you don't have any um, job offer or an uh, interview. Just put your like start date as like as late as you can, so that can help like get you some time like to, um, yeah, get you some time to try to like land a job. You're talking about OPT, right? Not H1B. Oh yeah, that's OPT. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, that's OPT. So H1B, yeah. Uh, I probably want to say just be honest with the employer. So yeah, be open with the topic during the interview. So if they ask something about H1B, just be honest, say like you really need a sponsorship and uh, ask ask the what's the like company policy. So do you like sponsor H1B or yeah. So they will, they will tell you like the company policy and you can yeah, make some decisions based on that. So, okay. Does so, anyone else have anything? Oh, go ahead, Wen. Yeah. Um, a little bit of personal experience I want to share first. Um, there's a website called My Visa Job, uh, and there's a tons of websites similar to this. Uh, I will type it in the chat later. So this website, uh, if you enter a company name, for example. Um, Google into it, it will tell you how many H1B and green card the company has filed in the, maybe the past five years. Then you can know whether this company had the history of filing H1B for employees. But if you, uh, if you found no record of this company filing H1B or green cards, then I would suggest you just pass this company and do not apply because um, it would just be a waste of time if you're an international student. So what I did was always, um, you know, before I apply for a company, if it's a big company, usually it has a, six, a track record of applying for immigration visa. But if it's a startup or very small company, I will always make sure it has the history of filing H-1B or green card. And um, another thing uh, I want to suggest to the international student, um, although like no, uh, I'm not legally responsible for the following words. Uh, it, it just during an interview, and um, the HR taught me like she will deliberately fill out all the candidates who select they need the sponsorship in the future. So I would suggest if you have three year OPT, do not select uh, you need sponsorship during the application. Um, Cause like you, because you have the OPT, you technically don't need the sponsorship from the employer. But if you got the offer and be there for maybe one year or so, and um, I believe most of the company want to keep the uh, employee and maybe willing to sponsor the sponsor, uh, sponsored H1 before you, even so they are not willing to do so at the very first beginning. Interesting, That's, that seems to be pretty good advice. Anyone else want to add to that? Um, something I would add is just to make sure you know the timeline for H1B. So for me, I got this job around June and my OPD kind of started in January, somewhere in January. So I missed the one year of chance of getting an H1B, the lottery system. 
So I only have two years left. So make sure don't make the same mistake as I did and be sure to know the timeline and plan early and act accordingly so you know what you know what you're doing. Great. So another point I really want to add is even though you graduated, just uh, I know like you really want to get like the full time job, but you can still apply for like internship. That's what I did. So I applied for internship. I got an internship in March, and for the H one B part, uh, just like I said, just be open, be open to the conversations. So during the interview, I mentioned I did the H one B sponsorship, but I don't need it for internship. I but if you are going to hire me as a like full-time employee, I really need that part, I need HIV sponsorship. So my boss uh, it, like was aware of that. And so I started my internship in March. Even though I was an intern, I had a conversation with him. I was like, uh, could you register me into the H1B lottery system? Even though I was like an intern, but uh, if I, yeah, it only it only took like 10 bucks. So like Ian said, just like, I don't want to miss the first year, like uh, the first opportunity, right? Then I will just have like two opportunities left. So he was like, uh, he was aware of like, I need the sponsorship if they want to hire me as a, a like a full-time employee. So he was like, yeah, I will definitely do that. So it's like, if we want to hire you as a full-time employee and you already have like uh, the win the lottery, that would be great. So they registered me into the uh, H1B lottery system and I got the, I, I, I won the lottery. So that that's great. So, but the thing is just like, be open to the conversation, like, like no, no her to ask, right? No her to ask. Great. Jeff, did you want to add anything? Um, I guess the only thing I can add is that if you have questions for the visa process or OPT or green card E5, E1, 2, 3, whatever, uh, ask one of the other ladies because uh, I don't know anything. Um, I'm, not, I'm not an international student, so I can't help you with that. But if you okay. have that type of question, though, still feel free to ask me. I'll direct you to someone like one of the other ones here <laughs> Okay. Um, that knows Thanks. it better. No, that's great. So, so, you know, I know we're going to have questions after, and and I, I this I, I can understand that some there's going to be possibly some questions on this. We have the uh, obviously the ISSO or the DSO, and you know the people on campus who will obviously be the best people to approach. So, I'm hoping with the questions, yeah, there might be a couple of questions, but we don't only talk about the the visa situation because then that would get that would take away from a lot of the great other information that we we. we we've got tonight. So last question, and then we'll go into a QA. and a uh, Let's see if we can keep it like two minutes each, if not, or you know, just like, I'll give us give us your elevator pitch. What, uh, what advice, Jeff, would you give to this group if you had one piece of advice to give everybody about um, the program and, the, and, and, the program and what they should or... do? All right, I'll read you the exact question. How's that? What advice would you give to incoming MPIN students, the 2022 class of 2022? All right, that well, something you, you, you didn't know, but you would have liked to have known. Well, in, in terms of the program and classes, I would say, please don't just take a class because everybody else is taking the class. Um, I talked to so many students who reached out to me about, hey, what classes are good? What classes should I take and all that stuff? And at the end of the day, every single person has some regret because they didn't take a class they would have found interesting. You know, we're looking back. Don't take a class like one of the big name classes. I'm not going to name anything because I know once I name it, you guys are going to jump onto that ship for that class immediately. So I'm not going to name any names. But if a class is one that everyone's taking, think twice. You know, if it's something that you see yourself using in the future or it's a topic you're very interested in it, in it take it. Otherwise, don't just take it because everybody else is taking it. You know, a lot of people regret take, not taking a class that are less popular just because they would have found it interesting or their current employer would have found it nice that they know that knowledge. Just so, you know, setting yourself apart is important in the career, in your career trajectory in the future. So maybe knowing something that other people don't know is nice, you know? And also I'm going to push the Ready Finance Club a little bit. Uh, I would say that is one of the biggest information, like one of the bigger um, conversation starters and topics 
on my job search and careers and things like that. People like to ask a lot of questions about that. I have a lot of interesting stories to tell. So that's something I'll push as well. Career advice wise, I would say, don't stop searching, don't give up. Just because a lot of the times, my own opinion is that it really just comes down to a dice roll or a coin flip every time, right? If, if or if not, they, like, they might not even see a resume or they might just swipe it through like an auto um, filter. Or even when you get to the point where you meet one of the senior members, like a CFO or a CEO or whatnot, they might just not be feeling you that day. You know, it, it might not be your fault. So just don't give up if you don't find the right people. I've spoken to so many executives during my job search. Some of them just, they just don't vibe with you. Like um, in that case, like maybe you wouldn't have fun working for the company as well. So just don't give up when you hit those roadblocks. Just keep going, you know, talk to me. I'll cheer you up when you find a drink or something. I don't know. Whatever you need to do to keep yourself going. Um, yeah, just don't give up. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. That's, I mean, really, I mean, really a lot of, there's a lot in that message. If you guys can, you know, if you get that right, a lot, a lot in that message. Thank you. Um, how about, uh, about, how about when? Uh, uh, I think what Ping said um, previously inspired, sorry, remind me of something I did when I was doing the job hunting. Uh, so every time I got interview, if the company I'm really interested in and also they are friendly to the international student, I will always uh, search the current employee at their company and reach out to them uh, saying something like, hi, I got an interview invitation from this company and I hope to learn more about company and the position. If you are open to conversation, please let me know. Something like that. And I will maybe send to 10 people and, and normally two, and two or three people will, will respond and uh, set up a call with me, then I can know more insights about the company and the position. And I will also mention this during the interview process cause like I feel only very uh, small numbers of people, candidates will do that. So it will leave a really, leave a good import impression on the uh, interviewer and on the company uh, will definitely increase your chances of getting the job. And uh, another thing what I said before is uh, really trying hard to secure the first internship or part-time job in the state if you never have any job experience in the U.S. Um, yeah, to, just to utilize all your resources uh, from your friends or uh, boyfriend, girlfriends, anyone, everyone you know to uh, let them help you to find the first job. Network, network, networking, right? That's what you're saying, right? Absolutely. Um, Yang? Yeah, sure. So for the classes, I would say try to maybe think about what you want to do for a career. Do you want to go for like a data analytics in a financial industry lane, or do you want to go for risk management? And try, you can also take business analytics programs class, I believe, or accounting programs class. So if you are interested in those classes, you feel free to take them. And I think they're very helpful in landing internships or even jobs because you do class projects in those classes. And sometimes they're very valuable to certain employees, um, you, you, like you're just better than anyone else who just didn't take those classes. And um, also, even just for our MSIN classes, so for example, the financial econometrics, econometrics class, which is really hard, but you'd be surprised to see how many questions you get asked during internships, during interviews, that something you learned in a financial metrics class. So quantitative analysts, you get a lot of like time series questions are all from those classes. Um, and in terms of job search, I would say start early and use the career center. Use the resources, um, get your resume polished, and um, go to the mock interviews and practice. You need you know, tons of practice to be finally able to land a job. At least that's what happened to me. Um, I went through tons of interviews. And at a later stage, I clearly feel that I was more ready than ever. And that's how I got my current job. So, yeah, that's Thank you. Sense.
No, very, very, very good advice. I, I keep saying that, but all everything you guys are saying is so relevant. Thank you. And last but not least, Ping. All right, uh, I think they have covered <laughs> like every point I want to mention, but okay. yeah, I just want to repeat some points. <laughs> I totally agree with what just uh, what Ian just said. Like uh, course wise, uh, before choosing any like course you want to take, think about your career options, like which career path you want to take, and read some like job descriptions. Write down the skills those job need jobs need. And yeah, just like uh, just choose the courses which can help you polish those um, those skills, and don't um, don't forget like even outside of the school you can use like some like online resources uh, like Udemy and Coursera those websites to learn uh, to learn some like uh, the skills you want to learn and do some like co course projects. And also, if anyone was interested, uh, is interested in, in in like business analytics, data analytics, I highly recommend the website called Towards Data Science. Data Science. So the blog really helps. The really helps. So just check it out. And, you want to type that uh, into the box? What's that called again? Yeah, sure. It's Towards Data Science. Toward Data Science. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. So, so career-wise or like job hunting-wise, uh, I would say don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. So I didn't get any job after I graduated from the program. Uh, I know it was hard. It was really hard. Yeah, it was really hard. And just don't give up and keep uh, keep doing the um, job search and keeping uh, keep networking with people. And you never know, like, and and what and what time point you will find a job that really fits you. So don't take it like in person. Oh, I'm I'm probably not good enough for the job. No, don't think about. It. Don't even think about that. You are perfect. Like you are perfect for every job. But it's like it's sometimes just luck. You're not lucky enough. You're not lucky enough there, or like you just like yeah, like Jeff said. They just don't vibe with you, right? So just like, don't give up and move into the next job, uh, next, uh, next job application. So don't take it in person. If you really feel hard, like talk to your friends, but still keep working or keep, keep like searching for a job the next day, okay? Uh, that's advice I really wanna give. Uh, I know it's very hard, but yeah, but keep, Keep up the good work. You are doing okay. great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. So that's the um, end of the question. So here's what I'd like to do. Um, I'd love to get some good questions here. We've had a lot of great information. There's got to be uh, some questions. So we can do it two ways. Just open your mic and ask a question. And also, if you don't feel like doing that, just stick it on the chat box and I'll read it out. So who's got the first question? Um, then I will. Great. Go ahead. Hello? Oh, uh, I just want to add something about the job hunting. Oh. So uh, when you searching for the job on LinkedIn or Indeed or Handshake, never apply for the job, which um, was created like more than one week. I feel the most efficient way is to apply for those positions that just um, posted. Then um, the response rate will be much, much more higher, believe me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. All right, so does anyone have any questions? Just open your mic and ask away. Okay, here's one on the uh, on the chat. What course did, in your opinion, benefit you the most during your job interviews? For example, uh, one of you mentioned earlier a business, I think, BI a BI course with its uh, project based approach. Who who wants to? Oh, business. Thank you. Thank you. Your business intelligence. I should know that. I should be more intelligent. Go ahead. Anyone? Anyone want to take, take that one? I think he's what? referring to. 
my yeah. okay. Um, it wasn't my direct experience, but um, it's someone in our program that took some VA classes and landed a good analyst job in PayPal. <laughs> oh, in PayPal, interesting. So they step basically what you know again. So you're, uh, I, I see think... you just put. Go ahead. Wait, sorry. Uh, nope. I think that course is called customer analysis in BA program. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Did I answer your I question? Mean, uh, for sure, or if I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. I think in response to your question though, I think the heart of the question is like, what, what, what course would benefit you most in your job career? I think Yi Yang and Ping made a pretty clear point at first. Like this will highly depend on what job you're planning to get into after you graduate, right? So there's no one. The example they post for like the business intelligence class uh, course would only fit because it's a job in that particular field and job title. So if you're going into accounting, obviously this probably wouldn't do much for you. Um, but I think a general thing that you could apply to your everyday, no matter what course it is, is like, the questions you get asked will most likely have very little to do with the actual assignments that you do, but much more with like the theory behind the class, like taking econometrics, for example, you might get questions on how the central limit theorems helps you in your research or how it applies or what's the point of applying like a efficiency or minimizing function of some sort, right? You're not gonna ask, get asked a question that's very, very specific until you get to a technical part of your interview. So hopefully that, that helps you out a little bit more. Thank you guys. Great. Next question. Four professionals here all working. I think two of them mentioned possible job opportunities. No questions? Hi. Sorry. Oh, there we go, Mildred, uh, thank you. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you for all your advice. I'm soaking it all up um, just because I feel like interviews are not my strong suit. So I definitely, Love all the advice, um, but my question is in regards to your program. So it's very rigorous and I'm not forecasting, but I know that there obviously will be challenges and days where I don't feel the most positive. Do you guys, did you guys have days like that or days where you felt like you wanted to give up and how did you get through, through those days? Nice question. Thank you. Who wants it? Um, I probably can take it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I really have those days. Like, that's, uh, that's really hard for me. And luckily I have a roommate. So <laughs> and she, she was also from our, uh, our program. So we just like sit together, watch TV and eating a lot of food and, <laughs> and like complaining about job hunting. That was so hard. Yeah, literally it's like, yeah, I, those days that's really hard but after after the complaining so you you have to write down how you feel like that's well you need like what i did it's like write down how i feel like and then just starting from the from the point i wrote down i just like start like looking into it like which one like why i feel that and will this the the root cause i didn't get the interview or something so and i will just list all the things i can do in the future to help me uh probably move forward and yeah my, my point is like just like don't 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 like uh admit it like those days are real those days are real just like you you have the right to feel bad uh, those are pretty very very stressful days uh, you just like drink drink what you want that's we have to keep it pg rated please <laughs> okay so <laughs> and talking to your friends uh, <laughs> and <laughs> especially it's better if you have friends like who is going through the same like stage with you like i uh, show he is also like looking for a job and yeah talk to him or uh, uh, him or her like so they can feel you and you can do so you you can do some like crazy things together but remember after after that uh, like after those days 
you still need to keep working, like keep like keep starting, like um, trying to find out like which which step can help you to success in the next uh interview. But check out the website I just mentioned towards data science, even though like um you're a lot interested in like the data analytics, but there are some like interview tips on that website can really help you. Thank you. Thank you. And would you mind uh, typing the website in the chat? Uh, I think, I think, uh, I I think, think Jason, there. yeah, Jason has. I didn't actually type the already. website, but the name of it, I'm sure if you do a Google, you'll find it. If not, okay. ping me and I'll get it to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get it from ping. Um, I'll ping, ping me and I'll get it from ping. Right, sorry. I love that joke. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's a bad joke. Um, yeah, so um, I, I want to get to a couple more questions. Was, was there anything that anyone wanted to add there? Can I go to the chat box? I think Pink did a really good job of answering that question. Just keep going. There'll be good days. There'll be bad days, right? Okay. So um, the questions, thank you guys for the session. It was very useful. I'm curious to know, are you guys doing, this is a good question actually, are you guys doing jobs in the fields you initially thought you would be in? It's a great question. Anyone want that? I can take this, I can take this one. All right, cool. No, um, I had an accounting background and then I was in a quantitative finance program. So ideally I wanted to be a quantitative analyst, which I interviewed for and I did a great job, but you know, job hunting sometimes is based on luck. The, guy, the girl that left and created, created that opening came back, so I didn't get that job. And then I interviewed for this job because I love coding and I love problem solving. And um, this firm kind of offers those two opportunities or my needs, and I thought I would give it a try, and, and I love it so far. That's nice. It's great yeah. to hear that you love your job. That's <laughs> that's really. So I mean, that's that's something. great, right? And yeah. that, that, just just laughing, but I don't mean it that that. But it it's that's kind of really cool that you you know to hear that you really love your job. That's that's awesome. Yes, because um, I mean sometimes you just um, go with the flow, and you know this is some components you like: problem solving, um, coding, and we have great people here. So that's why it matters. So that was a little bit of a plug, everybody. I know Equity Methods is hiring. I know I have an inside information on that one. So if you're interested in what Ian does, you might want to figure out a way to reach out to her without bombarding her email um, box. So I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, anyone else on that question about doing something different than they thought they were going to be doing? Mm. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Oh. I, I just want to say me neither. Uh, I thought I would be some venture capitalist, but <laughs> it would like <laughs> uh, you. I'm still on the way to you know to pursue the goal. But uh, if you are not, uh, if you cannot find may, maybe the uh, idealist job you want to find, but uh, you can still take your first job and uh, try to pivot in your career life later. So um, the most important thing is. Uh, to think about what you can learn from this job and how it can be transferable to your maybe the most dreaming job. Great. Anyone else? We want to move to the next question. Let's move to the next question because we are we're running out of time. I'm gonna. If you have to drop off now, by all means. I know we're, we hit our hour, but I I feel like maybe I could squeeze another five minutes out of the guests. Five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. If you have yeah. to go and you have an appointment, I totally. But I want to get to yeah. these questions if possible. Um, what type of interview questions do you think are the hardest? Let's keep it general, right? Not, but you know, is it technical? Is it the behavioral? What did you, you know, or or, or something in between? Anyone want that one? I, I can I can take that one initially while everyone thinks of a. Um, I would say, if you're early in your career search your technical questions will be easy and your behavioral questions will generally be harder because they will require you to think a little bit outside the box. But I think as you get a little bit more acquainted with the interview culture, you know, being able to like vocalize your voice better, you'll slowly realize that the technical questions are actually gonna be harder if they hit certain blind spots that you have. 
Whereas the behavioral questions, you can kind of sort of wriggle your way around as you, as you like become more, you know, comfortable with the thing. But I would say the single most important question to watch out for in an interview from my experience is the question that has to do with, do you have any questions for us? Because much like what I'm seeing today, and I see this a lot in academia, is that when moderators or people like Jason who are trying to help you ask you to ask a question, it's hard for you guys to come up with a question to ask. And that's the same thing for your interviews. It's hard for you to come up with good questions to ask your interviewer. So people that stand out are generally the people who ask a lot of questions. And people like Ping and Yang does that. I remember them from class. They ask good questions. So... I'm not surprised to see that they've landed very, very nice jobs themselves. So it's a skill that you kind of want to develop while you're taking your classes and things like that. Just learn how to pinpoint good questions with minimal amount of information given to you. Jeff, do you have any examples of the questions that like, do you have a go-to question? Because I, I think it's a really interesting point. I, I don't want to put you on the spot if you, you know, it's, and I know it changes from interview to interview, but do you have a kind of go-to that you, you, you feel is really effective? I think, I think about like the last three years, the most common question is uh, what does your day-to-day -day life look like in your job? It's a very common question to the point where like, I think everyone sees that question nowadays. So, I mean, if, if you guys need a go-to question, I think one I could uh, come up with, a, a structure at least that I come up with is like, so given like something like, so given what you do or what your company does, how do you think blank, blank, blank fits in with your culture or how does this, apply to your company, things like that. It shows that you care a little bit about their company, you know, it shows that as long as you fit in the blanks well enough, it shows that you can, you know, a little bit about current events and maybe some innovations that could help with their company and show that you're a creative person that can sort of like fit new things into their company. Yeah, good. So does anyone have a different response than Jeff? So we don't need to, Jeff made a great point. So we don't need to, you know, uh, belabor that, but is there any other uh, points you guys want to make on that question? I think it also depends on the companies. So if you're interviewing for like a bigger company where it's like there's better, bigger competition, um, they are for sure going to ask you technical questions. And if you don't, if you are not able to answer those questions, you might not be able to stand out at all among those candidates. So I would say just make sure know make sure to know that these companies are going to ask those questions and be prepared for it and for the behavioral questions i would just say um you need to know about yourself like how are your skills or experiences fit in what they do and be able to elaborate on that during the interview fit 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 right yeah great all right um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to this last question on here. Um, I think obviously, I think I know the answer, but let's hear, uh, could you share the timeline for applying for a job or internship? Anybody want that one? Yeah, sure. I can share the timeline. Uh, so actually I started applying for a job very early, like even starting in, I think 2019. So yeah, like the beginning of the program, I started like thinking about like the, my career. So starting applying for some jobs, but a lot heavily, but just like occasionally, if I saw some like interesting opportunities, I will apply for it. So starting in 2019, I would say um, October. Yeah, I started my application, but like occasionally. And then uh, I think it's, in February and March of like 2020, I, I started to like apply for the summer internship heavily, but I don't think that's the right timeline. <laughs> Actually, you should like start uh, to apply for your summer internship like in 2019 summer. It's like, it, so it's like a, a year ahead of time. So, but you can still like have like uh, some opportunities uh, still available like in the, uh, in the, like February and March in that year. So then I got a summer internship like at a like startup company based in San Diego. Then after that, 
they just start like applying for full time. So that's that's probably a lot of good decision I make. I sh I shouldn't give up like uh uh with the like internship. I but like later I just realized after I graduated. So I just started like apply for full time, but I didn't get any response until November. And I got like few interviews during yeah, November, like before, yeah, during November. Uh, but it didn't went yeah, it didn't went well go well. So I didn't give up I had to continue applying in like in December and and I apply a lot in January and February. Then I got the interview in February, like in 2021. So that's how I, that's the timeline, like how I got my current job. Just like, don't give up like apply. Even though sometimes you are like uh, submit a lot of uh, applications uh, as like uh, during a time window, but sometimes you just like apply for a few companies, but just don't give up. Thank you. Any anyone else want that or anything to add? We good. Okay, I think I think Ping covered that really well. All right. Well, um, I I think we'll we'll stop there. Um, I think we can all kind of like give a collective virtual hand the clap to our to our group here. Um, to Jeff, to Ping, to Eyang, to Wen. I think that was like there's much to to take from from what you guys had to say. Um, and it's so important that we that you guys continue to give back to the program, uh, you know, and, and so we really appreciate having you. Um, thank you very much. I'm going to put this poll up because I was told I have to. If you just, you know, put if you just answer that real quick, um, I'm going to end it right here. So, again, thank you, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you guys were fantastic. Um, and, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you, please, you know, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, and I'll kind of leave it to the, the group to figure out how they want to network and, 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 and get in touch with you guys. Thank you very feel much. Free, feel free to add us on LinkedIn, LinkedIn if you have any more questions. Great. Yeah, me too. Yeah, just reach out, uh, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn.